Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at choosewood.com. It's Tuesday, October 18th, and this is The Gateway. I'm Sarah Fenton in for Wayne Pratt. Ahead, abortion clinic workers in the Metro East say the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade forced many people out of the state to visit their facilities. I mean, they're coming from all over the United States trying to get access. And the truth of the matter is, Illinois um, is one of the easiest places to get your, get your abortions done. St. Louis Public Radio reports on the surge in patients from states with new abortion bans. That's coming up, but first, these headlines. Parents of students at Jana Elementary are asking for transparency at tomorrow night's Hazelwood School Board meeting. A new report finds potentially harmful levels of radioactive waste inside the school and on the playground. The board plans to discuss the report in a closed session. But Ashley Bernal wants that to happen in public. She's the mother of a child at the school and president of the Parent Teacher Association. We need to watch and understand how our school officials who are tasked with the governance of our school are handling this report. We want to see what kinds of questions they have. We would like to see that discussion play out live. A school district spokesperson would not comment on the issue. She instead pointed to a statement saying the district is talking to attorneys and experts to decide what to do. The two major party candidates for Illinois governor debate one more time tonight, Alex Dagmund reports. The first contest earlier this month was, at times, chaotic. All right, audience, we need you to remain quiet. We need you to... Mar- Any so, j- Senator, Are Senator, you going to run for president? Senator. And full of accusations. JB's an arrogant liar. Well, over and over again, you've heard Darren Bailey lie. Republican Darren Bailey has ground to cover before Election Day. A recent WBEZ Chicago Sun-Times poll found incumbent Democrat J.B. Pritzker leading Bailey statewide by 15 points. The same company that hosted the first debate, Next Star Media, is also presenting this one. Every TV market in Illinois, including border regions like St. Louis and Terre Haute, Indiana, will air it starting at 7 p.m. It will also be available online through the websites of Next Star TV stations. I'm Alex Dagman. Missouri Secretary of State Jay Ashcroft is seeking to prevent state funds from purchasing what he describes as inappropriate reading material for children. Ashcroft's office is responsible for sending grants to libraries. His office announced on Monday it's proposing a rule that would require libraries to establish written policies about what material is age appropriate. The proposal would also prohibit state funds from being used to purchase books which contain forms of sexually explicit material. The rule would be published in mid-November and then have a 30-day public comment window. It comes amid a controversy about a state law barring state schools from providing students with visual depictions of things considered sexually explicit. Abortion providers in the Metro East for years have been absorbing patients from states with tough abortion laws. But now that more than a dozen states have restricted or banned abortion after the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, the region has become even more of a haven for patients seeking the procedure. I reported on clinics and how they're struggling to keep up. After the high court issued its ruling in June, Dr. Erin King and her staff at the Hope Clinic in Granite City needed to figure out how to tell people in the waiting room. The thing we hadn't really thought about was just the sheer impact of going back into a waiting room filled with 15 or 20 people from Missouri and saying, so you just came from a state this morning where abortion was although not accessible, legal, and you are going home to a state today where abortion is completely banned. The clinic's one of two abortion providers in the Metro East, across the river from St. Louis. The region's one of the closest places to get an abortion for those in southern and midwestern states that have banned the procedure. The Hope Clinic expected an increase in patients, but since the ruling, King, its director, says they've been swamped. We're seeing 100% more patients than we were seeing in this time last year. Since that day, abortion clinic workers like Kawana Shannon have kept a close eye on the news. Every month, it seems like, another state is going down, right? Shannon is the patient services manager at Planned Parenthood's clinic in Fairview Heights. 
She knows every time another state bans abortion, more patients are going to be coming through the clinic's doors. Every time you pick up the phone, I mean, they're coming from all over the United States trying to get access. And the truth of the matter is Illinois um, is one of the easiest places to get your, get your abortions done. Planned Parenthood's Metro East Clinic has also seen a huge increase in patients, especially ones from out of state. Dr. Colleen McNicholas is the medical director for Planned Parenthood of the St. Louis region and southwest Missouri. We are talking about somewhere between 60 and 80 patients on the schedule every single day who are potentially coming through these doors for abortion care. McNicholas says the clinic has added more workers and hours, but the higher number of patients is putting stress on everyone. You know, it does take an emotional toll to sit with so many people who have so many struggles, who have to try so hard um, to get basic health care and to survive. McNicholas says before the court's decision, people from outside Illinois and Missouri comprised about 4 percent of the clinic's patient load. That's about 40 percent now. She says patients have more complications and are further along in gestational age, since they need to travel farther and wait longer to get their abortions. Regional Logistics Center, this is Carolyn. How can I help you? To help patients coming to the region, the Hope Clinic and Planned Parenthood use a centralized call center at the Planned Parenthood and Clinic exactly to get as many patients as they can to the Metro East. All day. This is what I do, answer phones and find funds. Carolyn Shirell works in the call center. She sits in front of a slow working computer with multiple tabs open on her browser, booking.com, Google Maps, spreadsheets, and different abortion fund databases. All right. So I was able to secure the funding that you need for your appointment. The National Abortion Federation did provide you with $405. She answers one call after the next from patients across the country, Little Rock, Memphis, and, of course, Missouri. All right, good deal. Verify that date of birth one more time. That database was moving pretty slow. Some are stoic. Others cry with relief. Every caller needs financial help. Many aren't insured at all. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Well, she was relieved mm-hmm. and People happy. cry a lot? Oh, yeah, all the time. It's a sense of relief. In the next few months, the two clinics could see some kind of relief. Another clinic just opened two hours south in Carbondale, and Planned Parenthood says it will begin operating an RV abortion clinic that can drive to different parts of Illinois. As long as states keep banning abortions, patients will keep coming to the Metro East and clinic staffers say they'll keep on working to bring them here. I'm Sarah Fenton, St. Louis Public Radio. David Cazares edited that report. St. Louis Public Radio is a listener-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Sarah Fenton, and this has been The Gateway. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at choosewood.com.